We've been married for almost 20 years, and if I had to stake my life on it, I would have guessed that Stephanie knew me so well that even with a blindfold, she could have identified me among a crowd of men. We had some sort of ESP when it came to each other. Each of us always knew what the other was thinking, and we always seemed to be able to sense when the other was near. I am a traveling salesman, and I'm usually on the road two weeks out of every three. Steph was an executive secretary for a manufacturing firm and had been since our two kids got old enough to go to school. Because of my occupation and the many separations that it caused, Steph and I had a fantastic love life. She was always so glad to see me come home, and I was always so glad to be there that we never reached that point in our marriage where sex became ho-hum. It didn't hurt any that Steph loved sex and always wanted to experiment and try something new. She would pick up a copy of Cosmopolitan and read an article on 10 ways to please your man, and if any of those ways involved make out, she just had to try it. A couple of years back, she got a hold of a copy of the Kama Sutra, and we are still trying the various positions. She said we would still be working on positions when we reached 80. Then a series of events occurred that would undoubtedly change my marriage and my life. I was on the fourth day of a seven-day trip to the Northeast when my boss called me and told me that I needed to rush home. Our home office had just announced that they had purchased our biggest competitor and that I needed to be there when the sales territories were realigned. That meant that I would be home for Steph's company Christmas party that I would otherwise have missed. I almost grabbed the phone to give her the good news, but at the last second, I decided to just surprise her. Just five hours before the boss's phone call, I had been working with a customer demonstrating a new line of adhesives. One of the tubes had burst under pressure and some of the adhesive had gotten in my hair and in my beard. No amount of solvent, paint thinner, MEK, or acetone had been able to clean it out, so I did the only thing I could. I shaved off my beard and got a brush cut. When the call came from my boss and I realized that I would be able to make it to Steph's party, I decided to have some fun with her. Steph had never seen me without the beard, and she had never seen me with hair that wasn't worn long in the 70s hippie style, although I did shorten it up some as I grew older. I had the beard when I met her and I had never shaved it off. I decided to make a few other changes, show up at her party, wait until I could catch her under the mistletoe, and then give her a passionate kiss. She wouldn't know who I was until our lips met, and no one else there would know it was me either. I smiled as I thought of the rumors that would fly when her co-workers saw her being passionate with a strange man. I hit a men's store and bought a new suit and tie so I could be dressed in clothes that Steph had never seen before. I hit a drug store and got a pair of weak reading glasses, and then I packed my bags and headed for the airport. When my flight got in, I drove into the office and spent the day working with Harry on the realignment plan. At 5.30, I headed home secure in the knowledge that Steph would follow her usual habit of taking a change of clothes to work with her and that she would go to the party from work. She would also take a hotel room for the night so she wouldn't be driving home under the influence of alcohol. I took the precaution of calling the house when I was two blocks away and got no answer. Just to be safe, I drove past the house looking for signs of life and parked down the street. I walked back to the house and looked in the window on the side of the garage and her car wasn't there, so I went back and got my car and pulled into the drive. I showered, shaved, and put on my new clothes, the weak glasses, and as I checked myself out in the mirror, I wondered how long it would take Steph to recognize me. Given the ESP thing that we had, I half expected that she would know I was there as soon as I walked in the door. I hoped not. I wanted to get her under the mistletoe before she tumbled. The party was being held in one of the banquet rooms at the Marriott, and the buffet-style dinner was already being served when I arrived. I spotted Steph at a table next to the area that would be used as a dance floor later in the evening. She was sitting with three other girls, and while it might just have been my imagination, I thought I saw her head come up for a second when I walked in. Did she really sense my presence? At that distance? She gave a quick look around, but then went back to talking to her friends. I noticed an empty table in the back corner, so I got a drink from the open bar and went over to the table and sat down. It would be at least an hour before the dancing would begin, and I could pull my little surprise. I was watching Steph and sipping my vodka tonic when the first test of the evening happened. Two guys were heading for my table, and I glanced around and saw that the empty chairs at my table were the only empty ones in the room. I knew both of the men. I had met them at previous company picnics and parties, but would they know me? Mind if we join you? You seem to have the only seats in the house. 
I waved at the empty seats and they sat down and introduced themselves. I lowered my voice to disguise it a little and told them my real first name. Tom asked me where in the company I worked, but before I could make up a lie, I got my first surprise of the evening. Steph got up to go to the ladies' room and my jaw dropped. Her blouse was cut so low that her melons were almost completely on display. She was wearing the shortest skirt that I had ever seen, and she had on CFMs with five-inch heels. She looked like a street hooker trolling for business. Larry saw where I was looking. She's something, isn't she? Tom chimed in. It looks like someone might get lucky tonight. What does that mean? Her husband is out of town on business, and sometimes when he isn't around, she plays. From the way she's dressed tonight, this just might be one of those times. What do you mean by she plays? That's the thing with Steffi, you never know. She likes to be inventive, and it's rarely the same thing twice. All of a sudden, I was not interested in surprising my wife. It seemed that she was going to be doing the surprising. They were using a DJ and records this year instead of a live band, and I watched as almost every guy there danced with Steph at least once. About an hour into the dancing, I saw a guy hand Steph something, and then I watched as she fixed it in her hair. It was a big sprig of mistletoe. He led her out onto the dance floor, and then they kissed. It wasn't just a little peck on the cheek, either. It was a long, hot, passionate kiss, and I saw the guy's hands slide down on Steph's and pull her to him. Then guys started cutting in, and the kisses stayed hot and steamy, and there wasn't one part of Steph's body that didn't get touched inappropriately. And Steph didn't do a thing, not one thing, to fight them off. Tom and Larry both got up to dance with her, and Tom was dancing with her, when the DJ announced a short break, and Tom headed back to our table with Steph in tow. I braced myself for the confrontation, but when we were introduced, but all she did was give me a funny look and say, have we met? In my disguised voice, I said that we hadn't. Strange. I have a strong feeling that I know you. I just shrugged and got up and went to get myself another drink. When I returned to the table, Steph and Tom were kissing, and Larry had his hand up her skirt. Tom and Steph broke the kiss when I sat down, and Steph turned to me and said, Are you sure we've never met? Positive. Just then, the DJ started playing music again, and Steph looked at me and said, Are you going to ask me to dance? Sorry, I don't dance bad knees. Pity, she said, and she leaned toward me. I wouldn't want you to be the only one here not to kiss me under the mistletoe. She kissed me and her tongue darted into my mouth. I waited a second and then returned the favor. Now she'll know I thought. But when she pulled away, all she did was give me a strange look, and then Larry pulled her back out on the dance floor. For the next hour, I watched as Steph did almost everything on the dance floor except opening her legs in real. She kept glancing over at me and any minute I expected to see a light bulb come on over her head. As the party began to wind down, Steph left the dance floor and came over to my table. We're going to take the party upstairs to room 921. You're invited. Knock three times and she walked away. I was torn between going up to the room and going home to wait for her, but curiosity finally won out and after having several cups of coffee in the hotel's 24-hour coffee shop, I headed for room 921. I knocked three times and the door was opened by Larry. Come on in and take a number. The door closed behind me and all of my attention was captured by what was taking place on the bed. Steph was riding up and down while another man was stuffing his D in her mouth. There were five other men standing around stroking their D and either waiting for their turn or for seconds. Tom walked up to me. I told you she was something, didn't I? If I was her old man, there ain't no way in hell I'd ever go off and leave her alone. I just stood there and watched the show. Things started to slow down as guys dressed and began to leave. Steph glanced over at me and noticed that I was still standing there fully dressed. She frowned and then made a come here gesture with her hand. Come on over here, mystery man. I know I know you from somewhere and I think I'd like to get to know you a little better. She rolled onto her back and said, come on, honey. I just stood there looking down at her for several seconds and then I shook my head no and said in my normal voice, no thanks, Pooh. My nickname for her, I don't think so. I saw the recognition register, and then a stricken look crossed her face as I turned and left the room to go home and wait. What's your opinion about OP? Thanks for joining us in our stories where revenge is served hot. Please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure your next chef remains loyal. Tune in for the next one to get your revenge appetite fulfilled. If you're below 18, hold on, it's not for the faint-hearted.